this week, um, <coughs> the journey to where we are at this point started a long time ago. I mean, this week, I just want to pay tribute and to, as I've done before, to pay tribute to the young men and some women who were prosecuted and jailed for the use of small quantities of, of cannabis. Um, there are a number of young men I meet in my constituency, and they say to me they have police records because they were caught with a, a stick of, of marijuana. Some others were jailed, etc. I think in paying tribute to all the pioneers, including Mr. DeCaris and the attorney and the other people, I think we should remember them and also pay some tribute to them for what they, they, under, they went through during that, that time. Mr. Speaker. Mr. Speaker, the journey to where we are today, and I know the member for Shrezel will one day try to chastise me when I stood in his honorable house and I decided and I told his honorable house that we were introducing legislation to decriminalize marijuana to, and also to expunge some of the records of people, people who had convictions for small quantities of marijuana. He was, I saw him very incensed and he said I was not given credit to the credit was due, Mr. Speaker. But, but he started that work. He started that work, Mr. Speaker, but you know, there were reasons why he didn't, he didn't, he, didn't, he couldn't, he couldn't follow it through, Mr. Speaker. Because what we're doing, we needed to have courage. Because up to, because it really is, is something that people don't understand, Mr. Speaker. There's a, a particular pastor in a, in, in, in a church, I would mention the church, who a friend of mine said to him that he wants to pray for me because I had introduced young people to smoking marijuana and cannabis. So there are a lot of people who, who still have that, that, that belief. So um, when we took that position, there wasn't a position to allow people to wantonly smoke in public, etc. Because I always say to, the, to the, the, the guys that smoking in public is still an offense. Smoking marijuana in public is an offense, etc. But I just want to, to urge the ex, to, to calm the expectations that are rising out of this cannabis situation. There are some people who believe that the expectations are, are and the country's economy will change overnight, and that is the way to go. It's a way to diversify the resources of the country, but it's not a magic wand. It will not it is not overnight create economic growth and economic uh, uh, development. It will help, it will assist, structural, organized, and I speak to my colleagues who, who in the countries, they have gone that way, and it's taking time, it's taking a lot of time. The returns, the returns take time, Mr. Speaker. But there's one thing that we must deal with, and it is something that really oaks me as Prime Minister. The double standards that exist as far as cannabis is concerned, and as far as many other things are concerned, including economic policy. Um, up, up to now, proceeds from the sale of cannabis cannot go through the, the normal banking system. Up, up to today, it can, you can't go, go for the SWIFT, etc. You can't go for the system. They call it illegal. They say it's money laundering, etc. Up to today. <coughs> but in cities, in some of the major countries, can they, there are cannabis cafes, there are people go in and smoke and sell and trade and put the money in the same bank that they say we can pass our money through if we sell it. It's a kind of, of, of hypocrisy that really hooks me. And then, you know, it, it, in several other aspects of life, <coughs> in, in sugarcane, in bananas, in tourism, in financial services, 
in, 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 in the citizens by, by investment program, any economic venture that we seem to be going into that may cause us to have genuine independence, there is some pullback. There is a pushback. And sometimes you wonder, really, is the, is the motive development or is the, uh, is the motive control? And several things, several things, and I, and I would not like to go into it at, at this moment, but there are several things, and, we, and that is why it's necessary that the people of the country get adequately educated so they can defend and they can protect their country when these attacks come and when these situations arise. Apart from, from the politics, the red and yellow politics, there are several things that we need to stand up as a nation and fight for. We need to stand up as a nation and defend and protect, Mr. Speaker, because these islands are falling prey to circumstances that may lead us to a place where we do not want to go, Mr. Speaker. We, talk, we speak about, uh, about climate change, and next week we're going to COP. The developed world made a pledge years ago to help these islands in terms of their adaptation, Mr. Speaker. Years ago they made these pledges. Up to today, not a cent. No, I mean, not, up to today, not, not a cent. They have not made these pledges. And the hurricanes and natural disasters affect us more than anything else. Up to, up to today, Mr. Speaker, the adaptation pledges that they made to keep it, want to keep the, the, the temperature at one less than, the te temperature increase to less than 1.5 degrees centigrade, they have not met these pledges, Mr. Speaker. But all kinds of control, all kinds of, and the sad thing to do is some of our own professionals, some of our own professionals, get carried away, and instead of defending, they promote. Some of our own people, instead of defending, and that is where we, I, sometimes I question a few things. We have not developed an alternative economic policy to deal with some of the issues that we have to deal with. And that, and that is because we have remained divided, we have not Look at the, the, our region, starting from Cuba, Venezuela, Jamaica, Guyana, the, the wealth of resources that exist in that region. You can imagine if that region had a serious economic, economic integration that would cause us to deal with our own development how we would be, where we would be, Mr. Speaker. But th th these are things that you, you, you have to think of. But the reality is every day we are faced with high unemployment, we are faced with climate change, things that we have no control over, but we have to deal with it. Every morning I get up, I look at the weather forecast, because these days there, there's no seasons, you know, hurricane season. Every day the rain falls in the morning, the sun is bright, it's burning you. Climate change, real. Real. Then they talk about high, in, high indebtedness. All the debts, most of the debts we have incurred is because we have to rebuild after a natural uh, disaster. Most of the debts that we have incurred. So it's called high indebtedness. And with that high indebtedness, you must cut back on, on, uh, on social policy. Then, so Mr. Speaker, it is really a situation where sometimes you feel like going round and round and round, Mr. Speaker. Then you, you, you speak about Im implementation, rate of implementation. Then rate of implementation, you have procurement policies. How can you, how can you increase the rate of implementation if your procurement policies are so tied? so tied by circumstances that are beyond us. But we have to follow these procurement policies. Then, so Mr. Speaker, this bill is a step in, in, in the right direction, but I'm not sure whether the powers that be, 
and I'm not speaking about the, the, the local powers, the powers that be will allow us to have the benefits, the full benefits of a cannabis industry. I'm not sure. It, it concerns me, Mr. Speaker, because I see barriers set up in everything we do. In tourism, you have, um, what do you call it? In tourism. The barriers. In tourism. Um, when they criminalize you, they criminalize the, um, When they see that you, you can't visit us again because of travel advisories. In tourism, you have, you have travel advisories. You know, anytime in financial services, you have blacklisting. <laughs> in, in CIP, you have concerns about the Schengen visa. So, I mean, it just, uh, uh, then in banking, you have the risking. And the Minister General is very clear. <laughs> the fear of the risking. Banks are afraid to, be, to, to take action because they are afraid of the risking. And the risking means that your credit card becomes useless. Somebody said it was your patrimony, but it becomes useless. <clears throat> you will not be able to use it, Mr. Speaker. And there are some islands already where the government had to put money in a helicopter and carry it to, to Miami, to the US, to send. Because the, 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 the country, the, the, the risking, there was the risking. These are things that the people of the country must be told about the risk and the pressure of being small, <coughs> the pressure of being un underdeveloped, and the pressure of being another, another thing which I will not say. So, Mr. Speaker, I support the minister, I support the, the, the pioneers, but I just want to temper expectations that that is the, the, the cure or for St. Lucia's economic problems. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. <coughs>